Playboy Cardi is currently one of the biggest artists in the new wave. He has been part of the scene for years, and his album Whole Lotta Red is considered a milestone in the rap game by some, changing the scene, while others find it unlistenable and completely overrated. This divide is normal as Cardi brought something completely new to the big stage. What many of you may not know is that Cardi maintains close ties with a gang from Atlanta and is not someone you want to mess with. I feel that many people misjudge Cardi because of his nail polish, vampire film persona, and honestly, I have thought the same until now. Regardless of whether I appreciate his opium vibe or not, I find Cardi's connections in the background highly interesting. Playboy Cardi originally hails from Atlanta, specifically from Zone 3, one of the six police zones in Atlanta. Unlike Zone 2, there are many gangs in Zone 3. However, during his youth, Cardi never joined a gang as he often emphasized. He focused on his music and playing basketball. Nevertheless, Cardi has always symbolized his connections to the Bloods, whether through gang signs, wearing red clothing, or classic red bandanas. Although Cardi is not an active member of a gang and has never been arrested for gang activity so far, he seems to lead a wild life. For instance, Maxo Cream, a rapper from Houston, mentioned randomly meeting Cardi during a mass brawl. In 2017, there were documented arrests involving Cardi due to a physical altercation with his then-girlfriend at Los Angeles airport, which led to domestic violence charges against him. However, he was released on bail the next day. In 2018, during a European tour where Cardi traveled by bus through Scotland, an incident occurred where he allegedly got into an altercation with a German bus driver due to the bus breaking down, resulting in damage to the bus window after which he was fined nearly $1,000 for damages. In another incident in 2020, Cardi was pulled over during a traffic stop in his Lamborghini where police found drugs, namely marijuana, Xanax, codeine, oxycodone and three firearms in the car, leading to his temporary arrest along with his passenger. During this encounter with law enforcement officers, Cardi made disrespectful remarks threatening an officer but was ultimately charged only for illegal possession of marijuana, improper passing of an emergency vehicle and expired license plate, while his passenger took responsibility for the other charges. But for a long time none of the two had to go behind bars because they were granted bail, in 2021, a video surfaced showing someone threatening Playboy Cardi for allegedly hitting their sister. Put the pistol down! It's put the pistol down and, and, and fight me! Put the pistol down and fight me! Don't worry about who I am! The fuck? What? Boy, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, nigga, reaching, boy. Cause nigga, if I reach, boy, you dead, nigga. What? I'll reach then, gang, nigga. I don't need no pistol. Look a pussy ass nigga ass like you bitch ass nigga. Hey, you put your hands on my sister again, boy. Ain't I'm nobody putting nothing on this shit. I'm gonna kill you, you gonna kill shit. I'm gonna kill you, gonna kill shit. I'm gonna kill you, boy. Hey, I'm built like that. Fuck a pistol. Fuck a pistol with your hands like. With your hands like. <laughs> while Cardi appeared ready to reach for something behind his back, most likely a weapon. But it wasn't clear who delivered the blow. In response to this video via Twitter, Cardi claimed to have knocked out the person involved. The next incident occurred in 2023 when domestic violence allegations were raised against Cardi for allegedly choking his pregnant girlfriend during an argument. His ex-girlfriend and mother of his other child Iggy Azalea spoke out about this issue. Despite these controversies surrounding him, Cardi asserts that he comes from the streets and leads a double life. Like people would shoot all the time and he would like shoot off my balcony but then like one time <clears throat> we got in a little argument because I hit his phones before his fight. It just was like we were outside. He, he, he like, it wasn't direct directly at me, it was just more like. As mentioned earlier, Cardi maintains close ties with the Bloods even though he is not an official member, particularly with a specific blood set from Atlanta, the Backstreet Homicide Gang, whose connection with him is no secret, as he has signed individuals from this set who bear its name and collaborated with rappers affiliated with this gang on songs referencing homicide themes. Other rappers like Future also have connections to this gang, Future grew up with the father of Lil One, 
and Lil One, who belongs to the Homicide Gang, is also a rapper, leading to collaborations between Lil One and artists like Playboy Cardi and Future despite himself being a lesser known artist. The Homicide Gang is well known among law enforcement in Atlanta. Following Young Thug and YSL's arrests on RICO charges, rumors circulated that the Homicide Gang could be targeted next, including rappers like Cardi and Future due to their association with them, especially since Cardi frequently references them in his music. He's even talking about ongoing beefs, such as dissing the Front Street Henchman Gang, another blood set from Atlanta, which with whom the Homicide Gang was cool in the past. The beef reportedly stems from musical rivalries between both sides. It could also be that there is another reason behind this, but I could only find this theory as the trigger. Lil One's father, who grew up with Future, is also a rapper who owns a rap label. This label boss and rapper are named Big Bang, and you will soon understand why I'm telling you this. The henchmen, like the Homicide Gang, have several rappers in their ranks. The most well-known among them is Ola Ron, whom Gucci Mane signed to his label 1017. However, their collaboration didn't last long due to contractual disagreements, leading Ola to leave 1017 and sign elsewhere. But while Ola Ron was with 1017, he suddenly started dissing Big Bang. According to Big Bang, Ola Ron dissed him because Big Bang simply declined a feature request from him. The thing is, Ola Ron dissed the entire homicide gang. Rumors on the internet suggest that the real beef arose because Ola Ron refused to sign with Big Bang. In June 2020, a tragic death occurred when one of Cardi's best friends, Sosa, was killed. Sosa was also part of the Homicide Gang, which became an opportunity for the henchmen to diss them. For example, Ola Ron posted a picture in Homicide merch with a caption stating, I told my enemies that once I kill him, I will wear his t-shirt. However, Sosa's murderers were never caught, leading to speculation surrounding Ola Ron's post. It would be far-fetched from my perspective to say that Ola Ron was involved in Sosa's death. Nevertheless, he wasn't the only one constantly dissing Sosa. The entire henchman gang did so. Another rapper named 24 Left Eye also engaged in this behavior but was later shot multiple times due to his disrespectful attitude towards Cardi's best friend Sosa. He did survive though. Homicide members like Lil Wan later went live online and told the world that they supposedly saw how Left Eye was shot. During this time following Sosa's death, Cardi postponed his album Whole Lotta Red further back. When it finally released in December 2020, it contained numerous references to gang beefs. One of the most famous lines is, ever since my brother died, I've been thinking about homicide. Cardi also mentions heading to Front Street and dropping names of his enemies while saying, I am smoking on henchmen. These are clear hits and references found throughout Whole Lotta Red, including a mention of Ola Ron being stabbed in Cardi's behalf. The henchmen wasted no time in responding with Benji Bluebills, another member, remixing Cardi's Stop Breathing into Stop Bleeding. Your homie killed your homie, I bet you ain't know. What? Yeah, your homie killed your homie, I bet you ain't know. This led to many hits against Sosa as they knew it hit a nerve within the homicide gang. In July 2021, R5, a homicide rapper, committed suicide, which again became material for the henchmen to continue dissing deceased individuals. So crazy, I was dropping like flies. What the fuck going on? As mentioned earlier, there is now a looming threat of RICO charges sweeping over Atlanta due to ongoing tensions between the homicide gang and the henchmen gang. A reporter who predicted the YSL RICO case has stated that there have been deaths and arrests related to this beef between both gangs. Personally, I had no idea about the intricate stories behind Cardi's musical persona until now. They really need to be careful not to face a significant RICO case fallout. What I find even more reprehensible are the scandals involving women whom Cardi allegedly assaulted. There seems to be a strange pattern repeating itself here. Cardi is indeed a very mysterious rapper. Hence, I found it extremely interesting to delve into his surroundings. How did you find this video? Were you aware of Cardi's connections with the underworld? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to rate this video and subscribe to the channel.
Your support would mean a lot to me. Take care, everyone. See you next time. Ciao.